How much stuff can the United States produce in one year? What about Mexico or Korea? What are some of the factors that determine the total amount of stuff an economy can produce in one year? One of the models we can use to analyze these ideas is the production possibilities curve. Hi, I'm Mr. Racine. Welcome to today's episode of Economics Reviews That Don't Suck. Look at this thing. The production possibilities curve, also referred to as the production possibilities frontier, is one of the first models you encounter in any introductory economics course. The reason for this is that it really illustrates quite nicely a number of economic principles that run throughout all economic disciplines. Okay, so why don't we start with a simple example to set up the model. So, Robinson Crusoe, or Tom Hanks, or your economics teacher, is flying their airplane solo across the Pacific Ocean, when suddenly, because of engine trouble, the plane plunges into the icy waters. Fortunately, there's an island nearby which he's able to swim to and he survives. After arriving at the island, he takes stock of what he has and he realizes that he has two things. First, a fishing pole, which he manages to salvage from the wreckage of the airplane, and second, a basket, which he fashions from the leaves of the palm trees on the island. He can use the fishing pole to catch fish in the sea, and he can use the basket to climb up the trees and collect coconuts. So in this model, we have a small, simple economy where fish and coconuts are the two possible outputs that we can produce. And we've got a number of inputs, or factors of production, available to us. In this case, what would we classify as land, labor, and capital? The factors of production that we discussed in an earlier video. That's right, well, land is all of the natural resources that are available on the island. Well, this would be the trees and the coconut on the island and the fish in the sea. Remember that capital is all of the man-made resources that are used in the production process that require some sort of upfront investment or other commitment. On our island, the capital would be the fishing pole and the basket. And finally, the labor is yours truly, the castaway economics teacher. So let's assume that we have five hours of labor available over the course of a day. One of our scarce resources then is the amount of labor that we can employ. It's possible that the castaway spends all five hours of the day climbing up trees and collecting coconuts, in which case, let's assume he could collect 10 coconuts, and having spent zero hours fishing, he catches zero fish. On the other hand, the castaway could spend all five hours fishing with his fishing pole, and let's assume that in that time he could catch five fish, and having spent zero hours climbing up trees, he gets zero coconuts. He could also decide that maybe he wants some combination of fish and coconuts. So it's possible he spends four hours of his day climbing up trees and getting coconuts, so he gets eight coconuts, and one hour fishing, in which case he would get one fish. Similarly, he could divide his time up in other ways. He could spend three hours climbing trees and get six coconuts, and two hours fishing and catch two fish, or two hours climbing for four coconuts and three hours fishing for three fish, or he could spend one hour climbing trees, netting only two coconuts, and four hours fishing, in which case he would catch four fish. Okay, so this table here represents all of the different possible combinations of fish and coconuts our castaway could produce in one day, given the scarce resources available to him. In our example, the scarce resource is the amount of labor available, in this case, five hours. So these are the different combinations of fish and coconuts that could be produced with five hours of labor. Okay, so in economics, we regularly like to use diagrams to represent data, and we can do exactly that with the PPC. We're gonna create a diagram where we have one possible output, fish, on the vertical axis, and the other possible output, coconuts, on the horizontal axis. And any point we can plot on this diagram is gonna represent some combination of fish and coconuts being produced. For example, this point represents two fish and three coconuts. And this point represents five fish and eight coconuts. So let's examine one point from our table. One possible level of output if our castaway spent his entire day fishing would be five fish and zero coconuts. That's gonna be represented on the diagram by five fish and zero coconuts. So we can plot a point right here, which is gonna to correspond to option output A from our table, which suggests that we can catch five fish and zero coconuts if we spend all day fishing. 
A second possible combination of output our table tells us our economy is capable of producing is four fish and two coconuts. Again, we can find this point on our diagram. Four fish on the vertical axis, two coconuts on the horizontal axis, and where they meet, we're going to plot a point. And this point, again, represents four fish and two coconuts, which corresponds to output option B from our table. Similarly, we could get three fish and four coconuts, or two fish and six coconuts, one fish and eight coconuts, or if we spent our entire day climbing trees, we would produce zero fish and ten coconuts. So now we have all of these points on our diagram here, which correlate to the data from our table, which again represents all of the different combinations of fish and coconuts our economy could produce given the available scarce resources. So we can go ahead, we connect the dots, and we have the production possibilities curve. Okay, so this is the production possibilities curve, and we use it to illustrate a number of really important concepts in economics. The first of which, again, is it represents all of the different possible combinations of output an economy could produce given the scarce factors of production that are available. So we could produce at this point, or 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 this point. What about this point right here? Five fish and four coconuts. It's not possible to produce both five fish and four coconuts. This is beyond our production possibilities curve, and thus it's not possible for us to produce that much. Why is it not possible? Our scarce resources. In this case, we have five hours of labor available. I know that if I spend all five hours to catch five fish, then I'll have zero labor hours left to collect coconuts. Or if I collect four coconuts, the most fish I could catch with my remaining time would be only three. It's not possible to catch five fish and collect four coconuts in one day. In fact, any point we plot outside of the PPC is going to be considered infeasible or unattainable. So that's an interesting point. There are some levels of output an economy is not capable of producing because of the available factors of production in said economy. What about this point right here? Is it possible to produce this much? Absolutely. It's definitely possible to produce two fish and two coconuts. But, but what? What's the problem? Well, if I'm only catching two fish, then I should be able to get more than two coconuts. Or if I'm only collecting two coconuts, I should be able to get four fish. In fact, I know that I could produce more fish and more coconuts by moving to this point here. When I produce two fish and two coconuts, I'm not maximizing the use of my available labor hours. This point represents an inefficient use of resources. In fact, any point inside the PPC represents a possible or attainable level of output, but an inefficient level of output. Okay, so why are these points here on the production possibilities curve interesting or special? Well, simply put, these points represent the combinations of fish and coconuts, which are both possible or attainable. We can produce that much, but they are also efficient. We're not wasting any of our resources. None of the factors of production are sitting idle or going unused. What about if our castaway were now somehow able to fashion a spear gun instead of having to use the fishing rod? What's gonna happen to the model? How's that gonna change our production possibilities curve? The spear gun is going to enable the castaway to catch more fish in one day. As a result, the PPC is going to shift outwards like this. Okay, the spear gun doesn't really help with the collection of coconuts. He tried to like maybe shoot one down and it's like Phew! ricocheted back at himself. But it's definitely super helpful with the catching uh, of fish. What about if our castaway spends a lot of time working out and becomes super strong so he can now leap to the tops of trees in a single bound and becomes much more efficient in the collection of coconuts? How would that affect the PPC? Now he's capable of producing more coconuts, so we see a shift like this. His strength doesn't really help with the catching of fish. That's a finesse thing. 
What about both? What if he becomes super strong high jumper dude and he has a spear gun? Well, now he's better at the production of both coconuts and fish, so we'd see an outward shift of the PPC that looks like this. Okay, so what are the changes in this economy which have enabled our castaway to produce more output? Well, the spear gun represents a change to capital. The castaway now has more and better capital. Here, a technological improvement increases the productivity of capital, enabling the castaway to catch more fish in one day. What about the of castaway's ability to jump higher? This is a change to the availability of labor. Better, in this case stronger labor, also increases the productive capacity in this economy. So, economic growth can be represented by an outward shift in the PPC, which indicates that the economy is now capable of producing more of everything. But how is this possible again? Before, we said that these points outside of our original PPC were unobtainable given the available factors of production. What is what has changed, enabling us to produce further out? Well, there needs to be some change to the availability of factors of production. More labor, better labor, more capital, better capital, more land and natural resources, better land and natural resources. Okay, so at this point you may have your head in your hands. You might be thinking to yourself, who cares? Why do we care about any of this? Why? What is, what is the point of all of this? Okay, so, so here's why the PPC matters. We can apply the PPC to real world economies to create a framework for how we think about the economy. So let's consider, for example, the US economy. We know that at any given time, the US has a certain amount of land, labor, and capital available to it. So we can consider at any given time how those factors of production are being allocated between the production of military goods, bombs, planes, tanks, things needed for national defense, and consumer goods, school lunches, Xboxes, trips to Las Vegas. Both of these require factors of production, and we can see that the total amount of military goods and consumer goods that an economy is capable of producing is going to be limited by the amount of factors of production that are available. We could also consider some point out here which is not possible. It's not possible for the economy to produce that much because of the availability of factors of production. We could also consider a point inside the PPC here which represents an inefficient use of resources. What happens when an economy produces inside its PPC? What might cause an economy to produce less than it is potentially capable of producing? Why might you not be using all of your available factors of production? These are some questions we'll seek to start to answer in the subject of introductory macroeconomics. We could also consider what needs to occur in the US economy in order to make these points attainable. And we know from our island example that this has to do with the factors of production. So in the US, if we see an increase in the availability of capital, or an increase in literacy rates or education levels, then we would expect to see this PPC shifting outwards. And this would represent the ability of the economy to produce more of everything. What drives such economic growth is another big part of what we look at in macroeconomics. <laughs> Okay, so this has been the production possibilities curve introduced. We understand that it shows us a number of different things. One, it shows us all of the different combinations of output an economy can produce given the availability of factors of production. Two, it shows the difference between points that are unattainable given the available factors of production, points that are attainable but inefficient, and points that are both attainable and efficient. Three, we can use the PPC to represent the concept of economic growth or the ability of the economy to produce more of everything. In order for this to occur, we have to have a change to factors of production, either more or better factors of production. Okay, so there's one more really important idea related to the PPC, which is opportunity cost, or more specifically, increasing opportunity cost. But this was such an important concept, I wanted to leave it to a video unto itself. So after you've taken the time to get comfortable with the material from this video, I urge you to check out the sequel, The PPC Part 2. Okay, I'll see you there. 
Hey, what's going on? I hope you liked this video and it helped clarify some of the stuff you're working on in your current economic studies. If you're looking for more resources to help you with AP economics, IB economics, intro level university economics, economics teaching resources, one, go check out our website, economics videos that don't suck, evtds.com, for access to our entire catalog of economics videos, as well as practice questions, answers, and even entire mock exams. Two, be sure to subscribe to this channel, economics videos that don't suck, so you can get immediate access to all of our new videos as they're released, probably mirroring your economic studies right now.